What is going on, everybody? It's your boy Abdullah and your boy Raza back with another episode of the greatest sports podcast in the world, the Brown Boy Sports Talk. Raza, how you feeling today, buddy? I'm doing good, bro. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Raza, do you like my jersey on? Uh, I would like it, but then we lost them, so because I got because I got one thing to say. How about them Cowboys? Bro, Six it's and- one game. <laughs> But before we get into the Cowboys in the NFL, let's talk about the NBA. Your LA Lakers, they came off an overtime win against the Charlotte Hornets yesterday. LaMelo balled the triple-double. LeBron James, his injury, you can talk about that. Russell Westbrook, the shot selection. Carmelo Anthony looking like prime Carmelo, man. What was your thoughts on the game yesterday and so far the Lakers season? First part, Carmelo and Anthony has saved our season so far. We uh, we are – we. The only reason we're not at the bottom of uh, the Western Conference is because of Carmelo Anthony. He's shooting 64% from uh, from three uh, at home at Staples. And then outside of home away, he's shooting like 35. So, but he's 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 killing it, Carmelo. You know, one, reminding of uh, what he did in Syracuse, you know, catch and shoot and won the championship with Syracuse uh, before he got drafted, obviously. And then with Russell Westbrook, man, Russell Westbrook's shot selection is horrible, bro. <laughs> it's so bad. Like, we look at the triple-double, like, he got 14, 12, and 12. But we don't notice it took him 20 shots to get 14 points. We don't see he got eight turnovers to get 12 assists. We don't see how he's stat padding. He had – I literally saw the whole game yesterday. He had five uh, five uh, rebounds going into the fourth quarter. That man was chasing – that boy – he was going after the boards from half. I one play, he came all the way from half court to get a board, to get his tenth um board to get a triple double. His shot selection is so bad. He's so con. He shoots the three with so much confidence, like he's Steph Curry or Damian Lillard. Like, bro, stop shooting, bro. And then the worst thing that can happen to the Lakers is obviously LeBron James getting hurt because. This is Russell Westbrook's hometown, so he grew up as a Lakers fan. So now he believes it's his team, and he can he can do whatever he wants. Like when LeBron James is on the floor, he's gonna demand the ball, and Russell Westbrook would have to play off the ball. But now Anthony Davis is a great player, but he's not the leader. He's not he's not the he's not gonna demand the ball like a LeBron James would. So Russell Westbrook thinks it's his team, it's his ball, it's his shot. So he takes the worst shots ever. It'll be a one on four, and Russell Westbrook would just pull up. And every game he airballs two mid range jumpers. He misses like five layups a game. Russell Westbrook does not play any defense. Yesterday he he was guarding Gordon Hayward, who was killing him because he cannot guard Lamelo because Lamelo put up a triple double. Rozier had twenty nine. He's not guarding Bridges or um, Plumlee. Uh, Cody Zeller. So Whoever was on the floor. Who do you think won the trade? <laughs> it's it's too early to say. Um, but oh, sorry, my lighting went off. But let's talk about um the LeBron James injury. What what's your thoughts on that? And how how long is he going to be out? Uh, according to sources, he's out for at least six to eight weeks, which is the worst thing that can happen to us, obviously, because one, the one man that can make it work with Russell Westbrook is LeBron James. No one, if Kevin Durant couldn't make it work with him. Paul George couldn't make it work with him. According to sources, uh, Russell Westbrook wanted to be a Clipper uh, before the Paul George trade, before Kawhi came here. And Kawhi said, no, I don't want to play with him. Washington didn't want him. Houston didn't want him. OKC didn't want him. A great player doesn't get move, uh, moved around four times in four years. Tell Name any other MVP that got moved four, four times in four years. Good point. No, I agree. I mean... Russell Westbrook, the stats are there, but, like, the chemistry, the spacing, the bright lights, the shot shot selection, all of that adds up to – I don't think he's even a top seven point guard in the league anymore. And then we have to have him on the floor because he's making $47 He's the third best player on the team. We cannot put in Ray John Rondo instead of him because – he has too much of an ego to be a Manu Ginobili or coming off the bench type of six-man kind of guy. He has too much ego for that. No, I agree. The Lakers, they're in the Western Conference. They need to, I don't know, get as many wins as LeBron is out. AD needs to carry the load. Russell Westbrook needs to cool it down a little. But moving on from the Lakers, last night the Denver Nuggets beat the Miami Heat. It was a bit of a blowout, 15 to 20 points. At the end of the game, the former, well, the reigning MVP, 
Nikola Jokic uh, blindsided Markeith Morris. And I want I want your thoughts on that. The Miami Heat, they were caught in the locker room looking for Jokic as a picture from, I think it was a Nuggets reporter posted on Instagram. So that was pretty interesting. What was your thoughts on that? I'm completely on Nikola Jokic's side, man. First of all, the, the Morris twins, they're known for taking cheap shots. You can, we all know what Marcus Morris did to Luka Doncic in the last two years in the playoffs. He would he would hit the man on his head and stuff. He would kick them. And then Marquise Morris, both the Morris twins are known for that. And then when Morris took the cheap shot, yo, because European uh, European players are known to be soft. Mm-hmm. I remember when we played Dallas in uh, uh, two years ago when we won the championship, November 1st, it was when Danny Green hit the... Um, overtime uh the three uh to make it uh, go to overtime dwight howard literally um like elbowed luca because and then after the game he said we're gonna be physical with luca the the thing with the european players is that uh they're we think that they're really soft so um that's what morris thought if you if you go watch the replay again morris hits him takes a cheap shot Bro, if, if, if you just want a foul, just grab the man's hand and that's a foul. It, it, it was a take foul. But then he hit him so hard that Jokic like almost fell. And then Jokic, because he didn't want to have the soft. Yeah, I, I agree. Of his name, he, yeah. um, he hit him back. Yeah, um, a, a suspension. He might be looking at maybe like what a two to four game suspension and most likely a fine as well. But Markeith Morris, when you initiate that stuff and turn your back on him, what do you expect from a seven footer who's like what 300 pounds, 280 yes. around that? So I don't blame Jokic. Just have you seen Jokic's brothers, by the way? His, yes, his, his brothers are always ready to, yeah, play. they're ready. They, they want the smoke. <laughs> they want the but, smoke. But um, moving on from that news, let's talk about uh, the New Orleans Pelicans and more particularly Zion Williamson. Uh, there was a, a video on TNT where Shaquille O'Neal and Charles Barkley were uh, laughing at the fact that Zion was doing pregame workouts, and he was just huge, bro. He just does not look the same. When do you think Zion will be back, and when he comes back, do you think he'll be back to where he was a couple of years ago? I think Zion's going to stay like this his whole career unless he loses some weight. But um, that, that's what Charles Barkley said. That uh, when Charles Barkley used to play for the 76ers, he was like this. And then Moses Malone, rest in peace, uh, forced him to lose some weight and uh, you know, become lighter. And you know that uh, according to Char- Charles Barkley, it made him the player that he is, you know, Hall of Famer. But with Zion, when um, he, he has an ankle injury, so he cannot even like get up and run or yeah. the only exercises or workouts that he does are in the swimming pool so that's not gonna affect his weight too much so that that's really bad for the pelicans and then their uh their um gm david griffin hasn't made any moves they really they had not at least now they have Jonas Valanciunas, but yeah, he's been playing great in fantasy Adam. he's my fantasy guy sleeper baby yes, yes. <laughs> no but zion I really think, and this is, and you know more, you know more than me when it comes to the Pelicans organization. We saw it with Anthony Davis; they didn't surround him with sufficient talent. Yeah, Demarcus Cousins came, but the injury happened. He needs to leave the Pelicans. It's, I know, it's sad, but he has to. Maybe like a team in Washington with Bradley Beal and Spencer Dinwiddie, or maybe, uh, maybe some other team. But uh, Zion Williams said, "You need to leave." Um, it's straight up like that. Y'all, y'all can have him. He's he's never playing for us all day. Uh, <laughs> okay. But let's talk about the Wizards. What is it? Seven and four? Seven and, was it around that? Fifth in the Eastern Conference? Yes. Not bad for a team. Y'all have been playing great. Yes. Y'all have been playing great. It's not like Bradley Beal as obvi- Bradley Beal is an all-star, all NBA caliber player. Obviously, we all know that. But that's expected. But the players that we did not expect from, like Mont- we all know Montrez, he won six man of the year, but Coach Frank Vogel. He did not play him in the playoffs at all. The way Montrez has been playing, starting when Daniel Gafford goes out sometimes, uh, KCP, KCP, the way he's playing, Kuzma getting <laughs> playing defense, the way um, Danny Avdia, the way he played defense. Oh, on, man, he was uh, locked. He threw up the Axel Giannis out of the Kumbo. <laughs> and then Spencer Dinwiddie, he only had three points, but then he hit the clutch three, that, which was the dagger. Against the Bucks, a couple. Yeah, six ago. points. Sorry. Yeah. No, he had three points before he hit the three. Oh yeah, yeah, well, yeah. 
Yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah. I, ju- I just think this team is so different. There's depth everywhere. Like, I actually want to go to a Wizards game. But I'm not at home right now, but they're just playing. the. They're everywhere there's depth. Kyle Kuzma, KCP, Montrez, Harold, Daniel, Aaron Holiday, Spencer Dinwiddie, Daniel Gafford. Rui Corey Hachimori Kim- is not even here. Rui is not even playing. He'll be back in two weeks. And I can't wait to see how Rui does with the rotation. Thomas Bryant is still out with injury. This team, they, they remind me of the OKC Thunder when Chris Paul was there. Good role players surrounded with a star. And you didn't even name the point guard depth in Aaron Holiday and Raul Neto. Yes, Raul Neto. Really great backup point guard in this league. But the Wizards, they, they beat the Milwaukee Bucks yesterday. That was really nice to see, even though they, they were shorthanded without Chris Middleton and Brooke Lopez. A win is a win in this league, and they move on to play the Cavs tomorrow. The Cavs, what's your thoughts on them? Evan Mobley's been balling. Colin Sexton is out with an injury. That sucks. Ricky Rubio, 37 in the garden, looking like MJ in his prime. Oh, my goodness. Ricky Rubio was looking like MJ in his prime, but um, when when the season for, uh, first started, the first couple of games they played uh, Jerry Allen at the five, uh, Laurie Markman at the four, and Evan Mobley at the three. When we all know Evan Mobley is a four, he he's, he can play the five for sure. But when I first saw that, I was like, this is never gonna work. This the, Laurie Markman is a center playing the four. Evan Mobley is sort of a center playing the three. But then, like, we all thought the spacing would never work. But but they've been playing great, and they're really exciting to watch. They really uh, they really pushed the Lakers all the way, you know. We we needed uh, LeBron to close the game for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, the Cavs, I mean, they're right now, I think, fifth in the Eastern Conference. They're a surprising team. We'll see if they can keep it up. But moving on to a more intriguing topic, the Golden State Warriors are 9-1. and one. Steph Curry. Wardell just dropped 50, a 50 piece, not 49, 50 last night against the Atlanta Hawks at home. And without even Clay Thompson or James Wiseman, how dangerous can this Warriors team be come postseason time? Did you see what Candace Parker tweeted before the game? She said uh, Steph Curry is going to put a 50 before the game even started. She oh, said I didn't because, even see that. <laughs> yeah, she, she said that because um, she said that Trey Young is like the next guy. So Steph Curry is going to show who's the guy right now. <laughs> and then Steph actually put a 50, you know, 50, 10, and 7, I believe it was. And they won the game easily. Trey Young put up a show. They both put up a show in the first half. And then Steph Curry just dominated the second half. And the Warriors, man, the, the players they have developed over the last couple of years, obviously with no KD and then Clay got hurt two years ago. So last year it was kind of a disappointment. But – they have had their new players getting developed. James Wiseman is not even playing, as you said. Kaminga is not playing. Clay. <laughs> Clay is still out. Yeah. Uh, as I said, James Wiseman's out. Jordan Poole, man. That Jordan guy. Poole, he Jordan is. Poole's been going crazy. Damian Lee's been going crazy. <laughs> Juan Toscato Anderson gives all of his effort every night. Jordan Poole, he's kind of like boom or bust, kind of, but – most of the time but it's he, boom he's, he's it's boom. big yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah but the warriors i feel like they'll be a top four seed in the west i mean they're starting off amazing and i can't wait to see when they have all their players back and ready to go but moving you on, contenders you guess i think so I, I think i mean steph is that guy the greatest shooter of all time just night and night out defenses trying to scheme for him but at the end of the day he'll still drop 50 <laughs> But moving on, on this podcast, we all have our really hot takes and a take that I don't think I've said before. When it comes to the Dallas Mavericks, their player, Luka Doncic from Slovenia, is overrated. Now, what? Lu- now I, something that Roz and I talk about off air, I think Luka Doncic is overrated. The man... A lot of players, a lot of people rather, say that he's a top five player in this, top 10 player in this league. But I think he's barely top 15. Luca, just off the fact that he hasn't really done anything in the postseason, I understand he's young, but if you're a top 10 player in this league, you should make some noise in the postseason. Really, I think shooting 70% from free throw range, he did start off slow from uh, the beginning of the season, but he's been turning it up. He had that game winner against the Celtics. But I still think that Luca Doncic is overrated. How wrong do you think I am, Raza? Bro, you are tripping, bro. <laughs> Luka Doncic averages like 30, 10, and 10, bro. Luka Doncic carried 
the Dallas Mavericks last couple of seasons into the playoffs and they really, really almost beat the Clippers both times. The first season in the bubble, Kristaps Porzingis got ejected the first game. Uh, Scott Foster, the referee, ejected him the first game. If he didn't get ejected, uh, they could have won the series. And then next year, they played the uh, the Clippers again, and it was it went to seven. Uh, Luca, they had a two zero lead. Luca, Luca's and they changed. blew it. <laughs> Luca has no help. Christoph Porzingis is always hurt. Tim yeah. Hardaway Jr. Yeah. cannot be the second best player. And I agree. No yeah, I agree that yeah. Although I just think that he won't win anything in Dallas. He won't be able to do what Dirk Nowitzki what he did in 2011. He just won't. He needs Dirk help. Nowitzki, Dirk Nowitzki had Jason Kidd with him. He had Tyson Chandler, who was defensive player of the year at the, at the time. He had uh, he had Jason Terry, who was the sixth man of the year at the time. Lu- who, who does Luka have who is even close to being an all-star? Chris Abschwarz, isn't he? He's always hurt, and he's <laughs> he's kind of he's kind of soft, too. He's, yeah. he's just shooting lower threes. If someone's overrated, it's Porzingis. Luca's underrated too. Oh, yeah. He's a top. He's a top five, top six player in the league right now. Yeah. Luca, when you whoa, whoa, when you whoa, when you whoa, 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 when whoa. you see when you see all the when you see all the GM uh uh GM votes and stuff, you see Luca Doncic number one who uh, they would take uh for top twenty uh top players under twenty five for the next couple of seasons. It's always Luca. Luca is the future of the league. That's why LeBron wanted to sign him for his brand, but Jordan did. <laughs> but well, Luca, the way he's been carrying, since this is the first time I've seen somebody carrying their team since LeBron James did in 2006, 7, 8, 9, and 10 with the Cavs. Yeah, but LeBron took in places. Luca hasn't. But then again, LeBron give James is the goal. LeBron James is the goal. Luca's in his third year, so of course I'll give him time, but as of now, he's not a top 10 player in this league. Now, <laughs> moving on, let's talk about the Toronto Raptors. They've been playing pretty well. Scotty Barnes, that man, a dark horse for rookie of the year. I, did I you just, see what KD said? Yeah, he's like, what did he say? Like He was talking about how young he was, right? Is he 19 or 20? Yeah, that that is these this rookie class is amazing. Kate Cunningham just came back at a double double with the Pistons. Jalen Green just literally trying to dunk on everybody he sees. Um, the who, he's a bucket. Uh, who else? Am, uh, who else am I missing? There's, there's just the rookies out there are just playing amazing. Yeah, yeah. Corey Kisper. Corey <laughs> Corey Kisper, the DC native. He'll he'll get there. Hopefully, Wes Unsell will give him more minutes. But that's pretty much it from the NBA. Uh, we'll come back at it next week, but let's move on to the NFL. And in news, your boy Odell Beckham Jr. has been released from the Cleveland Browns. No team put him on waivers. He did say he wanted to be on the Packers. Where do you want to see Odell Beckham, Raza? I want to see Odell Beckham Jr. with the Packers, the Green Bay Packers. They have Devontae Adams. They have, they have the system. They have a strong, they have a really good coach. They have, they have one of the best quarterbacks in the history of the NFL. They lie about their they vaccine a, status, but moving on. <laughs> he's still one of the greatest quarterbacks ever. <laughs> they have Devontae Adams, who's going to get 14 targets. He's going to get double coverage. He still has the likes of Aaron Jones. Tunyon. Tunyon. <laughs> Aaron Jones not catching like that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, <laughs> but um, I think OBJ would be a great fit, fit with the Packers. If not the Packers, the one team that I would love after the Packers is the Chiefs, man. The Chiefs, I think they're the underdog to get him because Tyreek Hill is getting double coverage. Mm-hmm. Travis Kelsey is getting double coverage. Right now, their third guy is like Pringle slash Nicole Hardman. Mm-hmm. But OBJ is better than all mm-hmm. both both of them. So OBJ would be getting single coverage. And then he he get more targets because as, as we all know, Ty, uh, Tyreek gets a lot of targets, but then Travis Kelsey is getting double coverage, so he's not getting that many targets uh, this season so far. So OBJ, I think he he'd be going crazy with the Chiefs, and then they have a great coach in Andy Reid, and Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback right now in the league. Well, you mentioned the NFC. I think a team in the AFC that plays in Baltimore might need him. I'm talking about the Baltimore Ravens. Big trust. Give Lamar Jackson that weapon, and we'll see how he does come postseason time. But we'll we'll keep in touch and see where OBJ goes coming this week. But moving on to the week, what was it, week nine NFL games? My gosh, it's going by fast. The Giants beat the Ruggs list Raiders 23-16. Let's talk about Henry Ruggs, man. 
Henry Ruggs just single-handedly ruined his career, driving 156 miles per hour. A DUI doubled the the alcohol limit. It's just he a very selfish act of him. The NFL offers free lift rides, but he still wanted to drive. He killed an innocent woman and her dog, and now he's serving maybe up to 40 years in jail. Henry Ruggs, man, what's your thoughts on that, man? It's, re- uh, it's really sad what he did, you know. It's completely unacceptable, as you said, and um, he obviously doesn't deserve another chance, and he should be going to jail for at least 10, 15 years. I, I, he's definitely done with NFL. NFL for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. And and what's crazy with the Raiders, their sec, their first round pick from last year just got released because he was accused of uh, uh of a driving incident. It's just the Raiders organization, the John Gruden stuff. This happening, the Rugs incident, they're making the Washington football team organization look competent. Like they're just, I don't know the, about that. The, the the distractions are just uh, crazy. They lose to the New York Giants. The New York Giants were now three and six. The Oakland Raiders, who were five and two. Not a bad team, but now the cliff has started, as Max Kellerman has said about Tom Brady. They will start to fall, and they will have their midseason collapse. The Oakland, the Las Vegas Raiders, sorry, are terrible. They're going to go downhill. They haven't used Darren Waller properly. Derek Carr needs to leave that team. I still think he's a top-ten quarterback in this league. They signed and, my boy. <laughs> and uh, they Sanders. did sign your boy, Deshaun Jackson. But probably in a couple of weeks, we'll probably see Deshaun Jackson on the news as well. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he won. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we'll There's see. But the, crazy stuff happening in Vegas. Yeah, but the yeah, very crazy. But the, the Giants move on to three and six. It was a great defensive performance. I think Leonard Williams had the game uh, winning. I think it was a strip sack. Derek Carr lost the ball in the red zone. And yeah, the Giants got the win. And moving on, the Thursday night game, the Colts beat the New York Jets. 45-30, Jonathan Taylor, a whopping Taylor. 172 wow. yards, had like, what, 40 fantasy points on Yahoo. He was just going crazy. Michael Pittman Jr., my guy from USC, was going berserk. It was a blowout, but then the Jets started to come back. Mike White got hurt. Josh Johnson, the man who started for the Washington Redskins at the time in 2018, was playing. He did as much as he could, garbage time yards. But the Colts, I mean, they could be – fighting for that division against the Titans. What's your, what's your thoughts on that? It was basically a blowout, but um, mm. the, it was basically empty calories. We're <laughs> going to talk about the Dallas game, with, with what Dak did in the fourth quarter. It was basically empty calories, you know, <laughs> which are bad for you, you know. So, basically, it was a blowout. Yeah, you know, I agree. The Jets, who knows who's who's starting next week. Is it going to be Mike White? Is Zach Wilson going to come back? We'll see. But we're praying for our boy Robert Sala. But moving on, the Falcons beat the Saints 27 to 25. And don't look now, ladies and gentlemen, but the Falcons are four and four. Now, they did who I think it was Trevor Simeon starting. The Saints just they were down the whole game. Then they took the lead with a minute and like 30 seconds left. And then Matty Ice downfield the court, Dylan Patterson on the third or second down. And Young Way Koo seals the game for Atlanta. What's your thoughts on the Falcons? And can they make in the postseason as a seventh seed? We better do a number on the Falcons next week. And even if we don't, we're gonna if, if they even make the playoffs somehow, we're gonna see them in the playoffs. Mm. But as you said, the Falcons beat them uh the Saints 27-25. Matt Ryan had 343 yards. Patterson had 126 yards running the ball. Uh it was a close game, as you said, but Matt Ryan, clutch Matt Ryan. Matty Ice, went, baby. <laughs> Matty Ice, he, he went crazy at the end, you know. And young way to the goat to seal the game. But uh, moving to the AFC, the Jacksonville Jaguars beat the Buffalo Bills in a crazy game with the final score of nine to six. This was the game of the Josh Allens. Josh Allen with the sack, Josh Allen with the strip, Josh Allen with the interception on all of Josh Allen. What were your thoughts on that game? <laughs> and crazy game. I think it was the biggest uh, upset of the game, uh, upset of the uh, the weekend. But um, Josh Allen had two interceptions. Uh, in the game, and it was some great defense played by both the sides. But if if I'm if I was a Buffalo fan, I would. There's nothing to worry about, you know. It's it's a long season, so you know one game. So it was it's not a big deal. And then on the other hand, for uh the Jaguars, it was a quality win against a yeah. quality side, you know. Yeah. And then uh, Trevor Lawrence, he went out the game, you know. He was hurt, and then he came back in. Yeah, I mean, for the Jaguars, I mean, Trevor Lawrence. 
overthrew Marvin Jones Jr. late in the game to seal it, but he has to make that throw. He's still a rookie. He's learning. But the Jaguars was a great moral victory. You know, Urban Meyer, as much drama as he caused so far this season, it was great to see him being – they were heavy underdogs and being the Buffalo Bills. So a game that will probably be an aberration for the Bills, but another – just a great performance for the Jacksonville Jaguars winning 9-6. to six. But moving on. A game in the AFC North. The Browns beat the Bengals 41 to 16 in Cincinnati. Nick Chubb came back 137 yards, just playing amazing. A lot of fans were saying that this was because the Browns offense didn't have OBJ. Joel Burrow with a pick six, no touchdowns. I mean, the Brown, what happened that game? They lose to the Jets and they lose to the Browns. I mean, are the Bengals? People, when, whenever, whenever the Browns lose, people seem to blame all the blame on OBJ. They make him the scapegoat. But <laughs> when um when Joe Burrow threw the pick six, which went like a hundred yards, that's not OBJ's fault. He <laughs> he's not playing he's not playing defense, you know. So it's not OBJ, you know. Nick Chubb he was he was also injured, you know. He came back with 137 yards after coming back. Uh, and then Joe Burrow had no touchdowns the whole game. And it had two interceptions, so that was a big deal. And then the Browns, you know, uh, Baker Mayfield played good. He threw, like, 24 times. Whenever he throws less than 30 times, that's good for the Browns because that means that their running game is working. Whether it's Kareem Hunt or Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, shout out to my man. He's hurt right now. He's going to come back in a couple of weeks. Uh, wish him a uh, healthy recovery. Uh, but then when, uh, as I was saying, when Baker Mayfield throws the ball less than 30 times, that means – the running is uh, the running backs are doing great, and that's when uh, Baker Mayfield is efficient. You know, that's the Browns are a running team. Whenever like if they get uh, behind, that means that uh, Baker Mayfield would have to throw the ball too many times. You know, and then they're a running team and a defensive team. You know, obviously they have Miles Garrett and Jadavian Clowney, and then they added the two uh, the two uh, DBs from the Rams uh, in the offseason, You know, so that. They have a crazy defense if if they uh, perform at at their you know level. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, man, the Browns. Hopefully, they can still push. They have that great run game. They have the defensive player of the year, Miles Garrett. I. It's just we'll have to see. We'll have to see. But the Bengals. Hopefully, they don't fall apart. This team is really interesting. A young team led by um Zach. I forgot the head coach's name. I'm blanking out on him. But hopefully, they don't fall apart like the Raiders. But moving on. The New England Patriots, they beat the Carolina Panthers in Carolina 24 to 6. Sam Donald with just three interceptions. I mean, Sam Donald is awful. Stephon Gilmore had an interception on his old team. That was at least nice to see. But the pay, the Panthers, man, I mean, starting off three and no and just falling apart. Man, Sam Donald to me, he's he's a bust, man. Three interceptions, and the, like both quarterbacks played really, really bad. And it's Steph- uh, Stephon Gilmore had his revenge. He had a pick, you know. And then uh, I- I'm happy to see my boy Christian McCaffrey back from his injury. And um, Ma- Mac Jones, although he didn't play great, but he seemed to make the throws that counted, you know. He seems to be getting better. These young quarterbacks like Justin Fields and um, Mac Jones, they seem to get better as, as the season goes know, on. Yeah, which is expected, which on. is expected. Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah, but the Patriots. I think they're at what five wins right now? Five and three, five and four. Around. Do you think they can make the postseason? Ryan Clark said they could win the Super Bowl. That's a little harsh take, but uh, I don't know about the Super Bowl. But <laughs> I, I can I can see them making the Super Bowl. Uh, the playoffs. The playoffs. I don't I don't I don't I don't see them going any further than that because they don't have an experienced uh, quarterback. They have a great coach and a great defense. You know, the, they have they have to. Mac Jones needs to make timely plays with that defense. You know, if the defense plays. With the way they can, the way we know they can, they're gonna hold these great offensive teams to not too many points. And so Mac Jones needs to not turn the ball over and make timely throws. Back. And that's another team where I want to see OBJ go. But then again, we all know Bill Belichick is a no no nonsense coach, so I don't think he'll probably allow Joe OBJ's ego in that locker room. But um, moving on, the game of the week, the game that I really loved watching. The Denver Broncos go into Dallas and destroy the Dallas Cowboys 30 to 16. I'm wearing this jersey because I am a Broncos fan today. Raza, what was your thoughts on the game? Don't let the score deceive you, though, because it was 30 to 0 at one point. It was just garbage time for the Cowboys. Teddy Bridgewater, sorry, before I get to you, Raza, Teddy Bridgewater is now 2 0 against the Dallas Cowboys. And you're shaking your head there, Raza. 
and Javante Williams running all over you guys. Melvin Gordon was running all over you guys. Tim Pat was it Kirk Tim, pa- Tim Patrick, the receiver for the Broncos. I started him on fantasy. Bro was going crazy. You guys couldn't tackle Michael Parsons. He had a great game, 2.5 sacks. But other than that, the, the running game disappeared. Dak Prescott just didn't know what he was doing. Amari Cooper dropped his first pass of the year. G- Judy playing as doing it wherever you want. Melvin Gordon, like I said, playing before. Dak running on empty yards. No running game for the Cowboys. And the, a punt that was blocked by the Cowboys, touched by the Cowboys defender, and then recovered by the Broncos for a first down. What happened on Sunday, Raza, for your boys? Can you see my reaction right now? Yeah. <laughs> Man, the final score says 30 to 16, but trust me, I was watching the game. It was not even close. And you were talking, you were talking a lot on that interview for Dante. Uh, when we were interviewing Dante, you were saying it was going to be an easy win. At least we're going to make into the um, playoffs. Like, hey, but like, the football team only lost by seven, though. I don't know, man. We were six and two. <laughs> but what was your thoughts on the game, Ronson? Nah, I think I think it was a complete blowout. You know, Dak, Dak had like 79 yards with like 12 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. So he, he ended, he, he had like 132 yards in the last like 11 minutes. It was completely empty carries for from Dak. With, uh, it reminded me of like the 2018, 2019 Cowboys where, you know, it's a complete blowout. And as you said, uh, Terry Bridgewater is 2-0 and o- o- o against us. You know, he beat us in 2018, I believe, when he was with the Saints, uh, back up for uh, Drew Brees. So the man with the gloves beat us again. But um, <laughs> Two gloves. Uh, yeah, two gloves. And then uh, we, we seem to be running, uh, whenever it's like 4th and 1, 4th and 2, like first couple of uh, plays in the game, we seem to get it. But then it, it's, it's a game of like chances, you know? Every other game, we seem to get the fourth and one, fourth and two, fourth and inches. But this game, we our first uh, drive, we Z couldn't get it. It was fourth and one, and Z yeah, couldn't get it. Was, so that, we missed out on that. And they just traded um, Von Miller. And they just – I'm pretty sure the Cowboys, they knew they were the better team, but they got punched in the mouth. And that's something that some teams need. You know, you can't be high-stepping all, all your way throughout the season. The Fal- Cowboys play the Falcons next week, and if they lose to the Atlanta Falcons – there's there needs to be some panic in Dallas. I, I think we needed this uh this loss because we, we were six and one for this and coming off the bye week, you know, we need uh with that coming back, we needed this because you know we're a young team. We needed to be punched in the face, you know. Mm-hmm. But now you know we know that we we're not unbeatable or anything like that. You know, we need to work hard and keep keep grinding and keep keep playing good, you know. We can't make any mistakes. And let's let's talk about the the punt, you know, the punt that got blocked. So it was they they punted it and then our guy touched it and then their guy got the ball. What's what's your thoughts on that? I mean, the rule. I mean, my boy Dean Blandino, he was explaining it, but it it was kind of weird. But of course, that's some type of things that would happen to the Washington football team. I wouldn't expect it to happen to the Dallas Cowboys, honestly. But the rules are rules. You know, once you block it, you just got to recover. It is a muff punt, and you know how the NFL referees are. This year and not even this year, the past couple of years has just been wishy washy. But at the end of the day, they got since, Cowboys. Since you said the refs, let's talk about the Marsh incident last night. <laughs> well, well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that game soon. But at the end of the day, the Cowboys still took that L, and they are them boys, America's team, baby. Six and two. <laughs> but moving on, the Baltimore Ravens yet again, the team in the DMV that's actually good. Beat the Minnesota Vikings 34-31 in overtime. Lamar Jackson, a rough start in the first in the first half, rather. But just again, Lamar Jackson proving why he's a top five quarterback in this league. Haters say that he can't uh, provide comebacks for his team, but we've seen it time and time before against the Colts, against the Chiefs, uh, both prime time against the Ra- Vikings uh, a couple of days ago. Kirk Cousins just not be able to win a game for the Vikings, but I just really think. The, they, the Vikings have so much talent. They have Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, Dalvin Cook, Kirk Cousins, a top 15 quarterback in this league, Michael Kendricks. The defense is not terrible. Daniel Hunter. Mike Zimmer needs to be fired. Enough said. I, I know you feel bad for letting Kirk Cousins go now, right? <laughs> yeah, I definitely. I miss Kirk. But they just have too much but talent, Lamar, Raza, to be playing like that. Yes, Lamar had two interceptions. But he still rushed for 120 yards, you know. That Big proves trust. why he's the best. He's the best rushing quarterback in the history of the NFL, you know. Uh, he, he he passed Michael Vick last uh, last game uh, by having uh, uh, by having 
uh, so uh, more um, by having 1,200 uh, yards rushing games or more, and he's only 24. That's crazy, you know. He 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 usually has 10, 15 years to go. You know, he can have like 10 times that. You know, and Freeman had 79 yards. Hollywood Brown had 116 yards, and then for the Vikings, you know, Delvin Cook, one of the best running backs in the game, had 110 yards. Justin Jefferson, you know. One of the best young wide receivers in the game had 79 yards after getting locked down by uh, Trevon Diggs uh, the game before. But, uh, yeah, moving on, the Vikings, they need a fire. They need a clean house. Mike Zimmer needs to get out of there. They have too much talent to be underperforming. And the Ravens just show that even with the amount of, like, what is it, 15 players, starters, 15 players on IR, they still can deliver a well-coached team and even a great organization. The city of Baltimore, be happy that you have that team and not supporting the team 45 minutes away in Landover, Maryland. But um, moving on, the slugfest of the week, the Dolphins beat the Texans 17-9. Both teams suck. Terod Taylor, the former Hokie, had three interceptions. Brandon Cooks did play well, but that's pretty much all we're going to say. You have anything to say about that, Ron? <laughs> yeah, we don't talk about those teams. <laughs> yeah. Um, another great game. The Chargers beat the Eagles 27-24 in Philly. Justin Herbert over 350. Uh, and 50 passing yards, very efficient, 32 of 38. Keelan Allen had over 100 yards. Devontae Smith, the kid from Alabama, 100 yards with a late touchdown from Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts doing a, doing a flip in the middle of the game for a first down. The Chargers, what's your thoughts on them? The Chargers beat a good, solid, not, solid not good, but average solid team, the second-best team in the NFC East, the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> For the second best quarterback in the NFC East. Yeah. Um Jalen Hurts. And it, it was uh, Jalen, and, Jalen Hurts seems to be playing good under and, pressure, actually. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. I think the because you all know how Philly fans are, man. We see it with the Ben Simmons situation. They're harsh, man. They're really harsh. But the Chargers, that game winning field goal came from guess who, Raza? The kicker that was cut from Washington. I it's just, I just not, oh. not surprised. You know, that's really not a surprise, but the Chargers, another win, Justin Herbert, he will, he'll be a top five quarterback in this league for sure. And that brother can ball. But um, moving on to the NFC West, the Cardinals beat the 49ers 37-17 without A.J. Green, without DeAndre Hopkins, without Kyler Murray. Cole McCoy comes in, the legend from Washington. James Conner, three touchdowns. I mean, Christian Kirk had 91 yards. Jimmy G had over 300 yards, but had some – Crazy interceptions that shouldn't have been thrown. George Kittle, first game back from IR, he had over 100 yards. This Cardinals team, everyone thought that after losing the Packers that they're going to fall downhill like they've been doing the past couple of years. But they went to San Francisco and they took they took the cookies off their off their plate. <laughs> this shows how great of a team the Cardinals are. Although you know, three of their best players on the offensive end, you know, D Hop, Kyler Murray, and AJ Green uh, due to COVID. AJ Green because of COVID, they didn't. They didn't have them, but um, they still went crazy. They beat a good team. And my boy, I started him in fantasy. Christian Kirk, 91 <laughs> yards. He won me the game against against my guy. <laughs> but, um, the Cardinals, man, they're, they're legit, man. I think they can make it to the Super Bowl easily. We'll see. We'll see. Hopefully, Murray comes back healthy and so does John, DeAndre Hopkins. But moving on to America's Game of the Week. Which ended up with a score of 13 to 7. The Kansas City Chiefs beat the Green Bay Packers without Aaron Rodgers. Jordan Love just didn't look that good. The Chiefs struggled immensely. Oh my goodness. What was your thoughts on that game, Raza? Man, no, as you said, no Aaron Rodgers. And then uh Jordan Love was starting for the Green Bay Packers. And um the good uh the Chiefs wasted too much time in my uh, estimation to to rush him. Uh, you know, it's a young quarterback. He he had like he 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 uh he do, he just has like cleanup duties when it's a blowout or he only plays in the preseason, so he doesn't play too much. Obviously, you know, and then Aaron Rodgers is one of the greatest quarterbacks, so he doesn't get any playing time. But he he seemed to be really under pressure with the hostile environment that was in Kansas City. Uh, he 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 tried to force it too many times to Devonte Adams, as as you said, uh, the Sneed pick over Devonte Adams. Uh, in the fourth quarter it was, and then 
Mason Crosby had another field goal blocked. He's having such an up and down season, mostly down. Mm-hmm. And then he also missed a field goal that re- that basically cost them the game, you know. Mm-hmm. And then Lucas Lucas Niang uh, got hurt, the right tackle. And then Tyreek Hill, uh, uh, Patrick Mahomes uh, didn't play that good. Jordan Love had more yards, passing yards than Patrick Mahomes. But then when it mattered the most, he showed Mahomes. why he's one of the best. <laughs> Mahomes boy, he delivered. That's- that that's when my homeboy showed why he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. He threw the first down to Tyreek Hill that really finished the game when it was third and ten. And uh, um, let's talk a little, a little bit about Aaron Rodgers. Why, why did he Why did he lie? I mean, I really think the NFL should punish him. But although he's one of the best in the game, they're not. The man lied about his vaccine status. He said that at the beginning of the season he talked about how one player on the team is not vaccinated and that we will not judge him. But surprise, surprise, it was him. But I don't know. The vaccine, you know, it's, it's a lot of controversy has split it amongst people in society. But the the Green Bay Packers, man, when Aaron Rodgers leaves the Green Bay Packers, I don't know what they're going to do. Like, Jordan Love, the way he played yesterday, I know he's young, but he just didn't look good, man. The Packers fans should be scared once Aaron Rodgers leaves. As you guys remember, at the beginning of the season, him and Devontae Adams posted that picture of MJ and Scotty Pittman symbolizing the last dance. So we'll see, man. We'll see. But uh, moving on, the Titans, Sunday Night Football in L.A. Without Derrick Henry, beat them 28-16. Matthew Stafford looked like the Detroit Matthew Stafford threw, what was it, two interceptions? It was a pick six as well. The Titans played Basically great on two pick sixes because one of them was like a two at the yeah. two-yard line. Like, I don't know what he was. It looked like a, a Nathan Peterman type throw. I don't know what happened. What was your thoughts on that game, Razo? I wanted to add one thing about the Aaron Rodgers situation. Oh, yeah, he was ahead. on the he was on the he was on the show, and then Aaron Rodgers, he 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 really said that he compared his situation to the MLK situation. He said as he was fighting, he said as he was as the Aaron Rodgers fighting against the people who don't want to be vaccinated. He said uh, he his situation is similar to MLK fighting for uh, black lives and stuff. That's crazy, man. <laughs> I don't know. If that's not white privilege and stuff, I don't know what he's talking about. And Rogers, man, you're crazy, man. I, I don't, I don't know what to say. <laughs> and then coming back to the Tennessee Rams game, as you said, Stafford he had one pick six, but he basically had two pick sixes because uh, one of them was at the two yard line. He basically did the same thing that Carson Wentz did, but uh, Carson Wentz did it with his left hand, and uh, Stafford did it with his right hand. Titans defense was so elite; they took over the game. In, in the first half, especially, uh, Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey, Simi, my boy, had uh, like five sacks. Uh, Stafford, he seems, he seemed to like get hurt the last play. Oh, Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson. He got signed league. this week. Got a touchdown. Touchdown. The, yes. the greatest, fun. one of the greatest all time running backs. That was nice to see. You. But the Titans, man, they lost to the Jets and. I really thought their season was in shambles. They beat the Bills on Monday Night Football, and now they beat a great L.A. Rams team who don't even have Von Miller yet, so we'll see how that goes. But Are the, they going to the Super Bowl, the Rams? I still think they are, but we're, this Titans team, without Derrick Henry, they played amazing. But moving on to Monday Night Football yesterday, the Steelers beat the Chicago Bears with the help of the Zebras, as I like to call them. You know, the NFL is just, it's becoming so soft. Do you, you agree with that or no? I completely agree. You can't, like, N- NBA, NFL, basketball, football, is like an emotional game. You can't even stare at the guy. You can't talk talk trash to a guy. Like, what's the point of playing then? We strive for it, you know? You, that, that makes it more fun, especially yes. if, you're, if, you're, if you're Pat Bev, it doesn't count. But <laughs> if you're actually good, you know, talking trash, like, gets the fans involved get like makes the environment better and it makes it better for us to watch on TV. Yeah. Um, the taunting call on Marsh, it was a critical third down sack. Literally the referee put his, like he extended his body out, his butt. Basically it was, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was just so weird. And then, you know, the, the Steelers, I, I just, I don't like, I understand it's a win. Najee Harris had a touchdown, but Ben Roethlisberger is garbage. There was one play where he just, like, literally couldn't throw the ball. Everyone thought it was a fumble. He's garbage. With the help of the refs, you barely beat the Chicago Bears. They were playing great in the first half. In the second half, the Bears had a special teams touchdown. 
Justin Fields, man, he and crunch time, he delivered for the, the Bears. Great throw to Darnell Mooney, Allen, Allen Robinson. But the Bears need to help this man out, bro. Matt Nagy needs to extend the playbook for this man. And when they do it, they can throw the ball downfield. Again, Boswell with the game game winning field goal. But the referees, there was a play where Justin Fields literally got hit like two seconds later, no roughing the passer. A first and goal, there was a touchdown, but then they called it back because of illegal blocking. When the offensive lineman didn't even block, he missed the block. It's just the referees, I, if, I'm a, if I'm a Steelers fan, I'm not happy of this win. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you with no Khalil Mack. Uh, the Bears lost the game because of the referees, man. As you said, the, the, the block on the tight end, that was completely nonsense. And then uh, the rough in the passer, that was clearly like three seconds after. If it was, yeah. if it was any other quarterback, if it was any other better quarterback in the league, they would easily get yeah. that call. Yeah. He literally hit him like four seconds after. Yeah. Justin Fields, he played a great game yesterday. I re I'm really hoping this guy pans out because, you know, the stigma with Ohio State quarterbacks. But the Pittsburgh Steelers move on to five and three, win their fourth game in a row. So we'll see how they do in the AFC North with Baltimore and Cleveland up there. And Cincinnati will be a pretty competitive division. But uh, that's pretty much it for the NFL and the NBA, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know your thoughts on the NFL Week 9 and the NBA so far. And where should OBJ go? Say yeah. that in the comments. Where should OBJ go? But that's pretty much it, guys. you have anything to say, Rosie, before we head out? No, man. I just wanted to say that Carmelo is going crazy. <laughs> Good luck to the Lakers and Cowboys. <laughs> Good. Yeah, they need that luck for the Cowboys. But that's pretty much it, guys. Like, comment, subscribe for more NFL and NBA content. And, yeah, hail to the football team. Hail to the Broncos, baby. And hail to the Wizards. All right, guys. Peace.